Good evening, and welcome to another edition of Veterans Connection. I'm your host, Chaplain Abel. Well, I hope everyone has uh, had a pleasant week. <clears throat> uh, we need to be in prayer for the tragedy that happened in Paris. Uh, it's always difficult to understand uh, what causes these terrorists to do the things the way the way they do it and why they do it. Uh, we do understand that uh, these terrorists many times uh, their understanding is beyond our comprehension mainly because uh, we believe that uh, the sanctity of life is precious and in their eyes it isn't. So we need to be in prayer for not only the families of those that were uh, killed and injured, but we also need to be in prayer that these terrorists will uh, come to see uh, Jesus and uh, turn from their wicked ways. Well, getting on to the uh, news this week. As you know, this program covers, uh, you know, news that pertains to veterans and their families and everyone in uh, in general. But uh, there's uh, certain things that would be more important to us as uh, Christians of things that are going on in the world. So starting off with uh, veterans issues. Uh, According to uh, a November 10th Washington Post article by Michelle Lee Lee He, uh, this is the second time this year that the VA Secretary McDonald has inaccurately cited the disciplinary actions taken against VA employees for manipulating wait time data. There was a disturbing discrepancy between the number McDonald cited during his November 6th speech and the number his agency is reporting to Congress as cases directly related to patient wait times. Well, it looks like uh, it makes no difference who the president uh, appoints. We never get anybody in a VA position who's got the guts to uh, turn around and do what needs to be done. And the reason I say this is not only because of the discrepancies, but on another article uh, from uh, November 11th in uh, USA Today, um, there was a uh, see. Well, I just lost my train of thought there for a second. Uh, oh yes, in uh, uh, according to uh, like I say, a USA report. Uh, USA USA Today article by Donovan Slack and Bill Theobald, the Department of Veterans Affairs doled out more than a hundred and forty two million dollars. That's a hundred and forty two million dollars in bonuses to executives and employees for performance in twenty fourteen, even as scandals over veterans health care and other issues rack the agency. That's why I say it doesn't make any difference who they put in there. Until they have the guts to put in somebody who's going to actually do something, uh, we can expect that the veterans will continue to get the shaft on uh, anything that pertains to uh, the veterans. You would think there'd be some changes, but... uh, it is. It's a lot of window dressing. It's the same thing when you get these uh, reports that uh, congressmen are going to visit these different VAs and uh, heads are going to roll. And uh, you know that's a bunch of bull. All this time, all these congressional hearings that they've been having, you think they would have done something by now? They haven't done a thing. I I think that all I've heard of is one person uh, who's being fired, and I think that's another. You know, I believe Portland, Oregon. All the other ones either get to retire 
are just still in there. So, if this was business or a corporation, you would have seen them out the door a long time ago. But our uh, administration, uh, I know people are always knocking down uh, the president's administration, but I wouldn't necessarily say uh, it is all his fault. But I will say this, he definitely doesn't have any common sense when it comes to appointing people in positions. And like uh, Harry Truman said, the buck stops here. So if there's scandals and problems going on in the VA and in other government agencies, well, it's President Obama's fault because the buck stops with him. So this thing of, uh, while the, uh, these people are incompetent, they need to get rid of him. Well, he's the boss. I haven't seen him get rid of anybody. I have seen him uh, continue to appoint uh, other crackpots who don't seem to be doing anything. And getting back to uh, some of the vet news, uh, there's still more than uh, three uh, in four injured veterans surveyed by the Wounded Warrior Project count post-traumatic stress disorder among their service-connected ailments. But getting mental health care continues to be a struggle for them, according to a new report released uh, by the group. Uh, that's the Wounded Warrior Project group on November 4th. So needless to say, uh, they didn't handle the Vietnam vets, and now we have an onslaught of other veterans, and now we have uh, the ones from Iraq, and Afghan, and I don't see where they're going to get treated any better. It's still a bloody mess, and uh, it's not going to get better. The only thing that does seem to have improved is, uh, according to a Military Times article by Leo Shane III, unemployment among all veterans reached a seven-year low uh, last month. And the jobless rate among uh, Iraq and Afghanistan era veterans set a new record low in October, according to the data provided by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and that was released on November 6th. And according to uh, another piece of information, uh, legislation was introduced in both the House and Senate to reinstate the GI Bill benefits to people attending a school that closes during their enrollment. Senators Richard Blumenthal, a Democrat out of Connecticut, the ranking member on the Senate Committee on Veterans Affairs, and co-sponsor Tom Tillis, a Republican out of North Carolina, introduced Senate Bill 2253 and Representative Mark DeCano a Democrat out of California, a member of the House Committee on Veterans Affairs, and co-sponsor Chris Gibson, a Republican out of New York, introduced the Companion House Bill 3991 in reaction to the close of several colleges earlier this year. And on another good note for veterans, uh, According to an Associated Press uh, article, President Obama has uh, signed into law a bill sponsored by U.S. Representative Stephen Lynch, a Democrat out of Massachusetts, which is aimed at giving federal workers who are also veterans extra time off to seek medical care. The new law provides uh, the employees with 104 hours of what Lynch calls wounded warrior leave during their first year in the federal workforce so that they can seek medical treatment for service-connected disabilities without being forced to take unpaid leave or forego their uh, appointments. And another article here. Uh, 
and Military Times by Patricia Kime. Uh, for more than three years, the military services have been allowed to ignore the Defense Department order requiring, requiring the inclusion of environmental assessments of combat environments in troops' medical records. Interesting. And uh, for those who are Vietnam uh, members of the Vietnam Veterans of America, uh, started August 1st until December 31st of uh, this year, life memberships uh, dues will be uh, $100. So if anyone's a member of VVA, they can uh, take advantage of this at least till 31st of uh, December uh, for life membership for $100. And first Floridians, uh, here in Florida we are home to over 1.6 million veterans and represents the third largest population of veterans in the nation. 1.8 million in California and 1.6 million in Texas. This correlates to 12% of Florida's population. 18 years old and over, according to the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs. Support is available for active duty military and veterans, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, National Guard, and Reserves. In addition to immediate family members or uh, our service members, the spouse or child residing in Florida, the service members we support must be classified as having an honorable discharge or honorable separation. So, that is uh, good to know. Florida does uh, a good job of uh, taking care of its uh, Florida re uh, veterans as far as benefits and things of that matter. And, uh... On uh, another thing here, uh, 40,000 soldiers have been cut from active duty ranks in 2015. We have 1.36 million active duty U.S. military personnel and 744,000 civilian employees at the Pentagon, a 6% increase since 2010. And we have 730,000 DOD civilian contractors, a 20% increase. And that comes out to 1.47 million DOD civilian contractors and civilian employees. So, military's being cut 40,000, and yet uh, civilians and contractors and DOD uh, contractors have a 20% increase and civilians in the Pentagon have a 6% increase as if uh, those uh, personnel are going to do it in, uh, to uh, protect our uh, freedom goes to show you where their priorities lie uh, I was also handed this uh, the other day uh, for those that uh, live in uh, Polk County, Florida, that's in the central part of the state, there are some groups that, uh, besides the uh, American Legion, VFW, uh, there is the Korean War Veterans Association, uh, service in Korea from September 3rd, 1945 to the present time, uh, can, uh, belong to the, the association and uh, the Marine Corps League meets in uh, Winter Haven 7 p.m. the fourth Thursday of the month at the American Legion Post 38 and the first cavalry division uh, a troop Florida chapter they meet at various locations in the area. Uh, you can uh, add a whole of uh